Hi, super scientists. So we're going to be learning about water pollution. This is your 3.3 note section. Oh, Miss Owens, that little graphic looks familiar. I wonder why, but it's in your lab notebook. So we can see urban runoff that's coming from all these cities and cars. It's probably going to include oil and other contaminants from a city. Urban refers to city. Agri. Oh, STEM, agri. Agri means field, agricultural runoff. We've got some cows, we've got some farms. So agricultural runoff is gonna be coming from farms, agri. Might even be some manure, right, from those little cows. So fertilizer, pesticide stuff that would be sprayed on crops. Residential runoff, that is gonna be from houses and developments, places where you guys are gonna live and things that you might visit. And we have eutrophication beginning down here at the bottom. Too much weed and algae growth in this water source. So eventually that might end up taking over that water and eutrophication occur. So look at our two pictures that you see here. This is a before and an after picture. So if you just think about the comparison between the two, what are some things that you notice? What are some things that are in common or different? Take a minute and write down a few things in your lab notebook. So one of the things you immediately see is the face here has been worn off. A lot of the details that you see in the uh, wardrobe here, like the cloth drapery, a lot of that's worn off. This hand completely missing um, right here where you would have the other arm that's very eroded. And a lot of the detail work here where you've got um, this kind of buckling area here is not present. And a lot of this is worn down as well. So that is some effects from acid rain. So rain that's more acidic than normal. And this particular statue is probably made of limestone, uh, marble. So it eroded uh, chemically fairly easily. So we're looking at different types of pollution. So what is pollution? It's anything that's added to, in this case, water, that's going to have a negative effect. So it's something that's gonna be harmful to water. This is a list of pretty common freshwater pollutants. A lot of these you'll notice are from human activities because humans are not always conscientious or cognizant of their activities and are not always responsible with the way that we handle things. And a lot of times we don't think about the consequences of our actions. So some of these are gonna be runoff from farms, uh, fields, factory sites, things like that, roads, um, urban areas. It's gonna include things like chemicals, primarily pesticides and fertilizer, industrial chemicals, metal, um, so metal that will get dissolved in water and could cause nervous system problems, radioactive materials, oil materials, bacteria, not so much human fault, but a lot of those sources are going to be due to areas where you've got animals like at a farm. So there's a couple different categories of pollutants. One is point source pollution, and that is going to be pollution that's from an identified source. So you can tell exactly where that pollutant is coming from. Some pretty common examples are uh, gas tanks that are leaking, whether it's um, an underground oil tank or a gas tank, landfills. So a lot of people, um, when you throw your trash out, that trash will eventually end up in a landfill. It doesn't just magically disappear. Industrial waste, because sometimes industrial waste gets buried underground in barrels, which will leak um, and will wear down over time. Septic tanks as well. We talked about the wastewater treatment process and how poo water is cleaned and returned to the environment. In this picture, you can see uh, this factory is definitely releasing some kind of exhaust into the air. It's probably going to have sulfur dioxide and uh, nitrous oxide and a few other chemicals in it. And this is one uh, pretty irresponsible action of somebody that worked at a fast food company, and they're just dumping this oil into the storm drain here, which will go out to a river, which is probably used for drinking water for an area. And non-point source pollution is the other category, and it's pollution that you can't tell where it's coming from. It cannot be traced back to a specific source. So it's an unidentified area, and in some cases could be multiple sources. 
the biggest example is run off. If you have a question on your EOG that asks you about non-point source pollution, probably the answer is going to be runoff. So that a lot of times is going to be runoff from farms. So that would be agricultural, right? Your STEM agri homes. So that would be residential areas and urban runoff is going to be referring to areas where you have cities and you've got buildings and different structures like that. So we see in this first picture, a bunch of nasty looking stuff and this water here where the rest of the water is pretty like beautiful and blue. So you can't tell exactly where it's coming from. You can see that it's coming from what looks like this river, but we don't know where it originated. It's just all kind of flowing into this area. It could be like multiple spots contributing to it. We don't know. And then this nice little oily rainbow looks all pretty colored. You see this in the Walmart's parking lot. After it rains, a lot of times you'll notice all this oil residue that's on the surface. Probably some oil leaking out of different cars, but you don't know where it came from. It's not like some oil drops have little signs say, hey, I'm coming out of this car. You don't know where that originated at. So it all gets kind of washed down the road and eventually all that runoff ends up in a storm drain, which will end up, like in this case, probably dumping into a river. There are a couple major sources of pollution that um, are pretty big contributors. One is human waste, whether it's trash or litter or um, just any kind of waste, or it could be talking about like poop kind of waste. So um, that's just um, a general category of human actions. Industrial waste is another one. So factories and industries contributing to different types of waste and that could be like these oil barrels here storing different types of waste or it could be like radioactive waste or other kinds of chemicals and then chemical runoff a lot of times that could be from factories or industries but also could be referring to agricultural areas too pesticide and fertilizer are common uh, runoff sources that are agricultural and this pretty nasty looking water so water should not be red that's some kind of chemical runoff that's bad and dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane ddt you'll probably have some questions on your eog asking you about ddt or about different types of pesticides ddt is a pesticide that was banned in the 70s it was um, since the best side used as you can see on the canister over here to get rid of bugs lice fleas ants and other pests that crawl it was really commonly used it was a really strong and harmful pesticide it could take more than 15 years to break down and what would end up happening is that it would be used and it was sprinkled around people's homes and all over the place because it was uh, marketed as something that was really safe and really effective it ended up making a lot of people sick. It caused a lot of people to get cancer. It caused a lot of animals to die. And soil and plants were contaminated. So because it takes 15 years to break down, to start breaking down, a lot of um, a lot of plants and soil, crops even, that people would be eating, um, ended up storing that chemical. So people would use that as a pesticide, perhaps around crops that they were going to be eating. And then they would consume that so they were ingesting it they were getting that chemical into their body so a lot of people end up getting really sick and getting cancer one of the biggest places that they started noticing that there was an issue with this pesticide is in eggs bird eggs because the eggs ended up being very fragile and would break super easily and you know eggs are kind of fragile anyway to begin with but they were um super super thin and fragile and um, different types of uh, like hawks and eagles were some of the first species that were noticed that it was problematic. So this is probably one of the best ways where you might see DDT presented on your EOG. So this pyramid is showing you a trophic level pyramid. This is called bioaccumulation or biomagnification. So bio means life. If you magnify something, you're making it larger. So biomagnification is referring to uh, making something greater, making us an amount greater in living organisms. So if you look at our trophic level pyramid here, this is representing water down here at the bottom, and that's not part of your trophic levels. It's not part of your um, food web necessarily, but it's presented in this diagram because it has a base amount 
of DDT. It's got 0 0.00003 parts per million ppm. So it is just showing us here that it has a small amount of DDT in the water that has probably gotten the water from some kind of runoff, whether it's reg residential or agricultural. So this is our producer. And this is phytoplankton. So this phytoplankton is algae, basically. And you can see it has a little bit of a green tint representing that it's photosynthetic. These guys are zooplankton. So they will, they're animal-like, and they will consume the phytoplankton algae. We've got some frogs and fish, and they will eat the zooplankton. And then we have some egrets, some kind of birds up here. This is an apex predator, and they will eat these frogs and fish. So what you see is there's an increasing amount of DDT, the increasing concentration of DDT as you go up in your trophic level pyramid, right? So where is the highest amount of DDT present? That's going to be up here where you have 20 parts per million at the top of your trophic level pyramid, right? So that, uh, why is that? Well, that's because these are the big guys. They will have um, not only consume the most, but they're going to consume the fish and the frogs, which have DDT in them, which ate the zooplankton, which had DDT in them, which ate the algae, which had DDT in them, which swam in the water that had a little bit of DDT in it already. So that DDT is just passing up the food chain from one trophic level to the next, plus this apex predator has to consume a whole lot, so it's getting a lot more DDT in it. So where's the smallest amount in the living organisms? The smallest amount in the living organisms is going to be down here at the bottom because remember the water is not alive. So this is 0 0.2 is looking at the phytoplankton, the amount of parts per million in the phytoplankton.